Down here, there's also a kind of sanitation squad comprised of white blood cells that swings into action, surrounds invading bacteria, and ravenously consumes them. This mopping up operation is another part of the healing process, again, controlled by DNA. These cells are parts of us, but how alien they seem. Within each of them, within every cell, there are exquisitely evolved molecular machines, nucleic acids, enzymes, the cell architecture. Every cell is a triumph of natural selection, and we're made of trillions of cells. We are, each of us, a multitude. Within us is a little universe. Human DNA is a coiled ladder, a billion nucleotides long. Many possible combinations of nucleotides are nonsense. That is, they translate into proteins which serve no useful function whatever. Only a comparatively few nucleic acid molecules are any good for life forms as complicated as we are. But even so, the number of useful ways of assembling nucleic acids is stupefyingly large. It's probably larger than the total number of atoms in the universe. This means that the number of possible kinds of human beings is vastly greater than the number of human beings that has ever lived. This untapped potential of the human species is immense. There must be ways of putting nucleic acids together which will function far better by any criterion you wish to choose than the hereditary instructions of any human being who has ever lived. Fortunately, we do not know, or at least do not yet know, how to assemble alternative sequences of nucleotides to make alternative kinds of human beings. But in the future, we might well be able to put nucleotides together in any desired sequence, to produce whatever human characteristics we think desire, a disquieting and awesome prospect.